Grade 8 math number 10.1D, we're going to find the center of dilation. So we know from the last couple of videos that a dilation can make an enlargement, a larger figure, or a reduction, a smaller figure. Well, the center of dilation is the location where the lines intersect, drawn through the corresponding coordinate points. So we know that they're going to be in ratio, in proportion to each other, the image and the pre-image. The image is the copy. The pre-image is the original. And we put the image over the original, or over the pre-image. And we know which one is the copy and which one is the original, because the copy is going to have these little tick marks of prime notation. Okay? So remember, a dilation is a transformation that changes size, but not the shape of the figure. And the image, the copy, is going to have that prime notation, those little tick marks. The pre-image won't. So let's take a look at this coordinate plane here. We can look at this blue square and this pink square, and we can look at the labeling and say, okay, these are clean. There's no little tick marks here. And this does have the little tick marks. So this is the second one. This is the copy. This is the image. This is the original pre-image. And we can see that it got bigger, didn't it? It went through an enlargement. The original image was only two units across and two units down, and this one is one, two, three, four, five, six units across and one, two, three, four, five, six units down. If we were to do this as a proportion, we'd say that square A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime would be over the square of A, B, C, D, right? So, because the copy is six units across and the original is two units across, well, six over two equals three, we know this one's three times bigger. See? That's the proportion, the ratio. It's six to two, or three. Well, we, met, we have to make sure that we've got the correct corresponding points before we draw these lines. So you want to make sure that you're connecting A to A prime and B to B prime, and we draw these lines. We connect C to C prime and D to D prime. Where all of the lines meet is the center of dilation. So this is negative 7 on the X and 5 for the Y. That's the center of dilation. All we had to do is connect the corresponding points with a line to see where all the lines met, okay? You want to make sure that you don't draw the wrong line, okay? Because that'll mess everything up. In this one, B was accidentally connected to A prime. So here's the vanishing point. Here's point B, and it was drawn to A prime. Well, that's not the right one. It should have been A to A prime and B to B prime. So that'll mess your drawing up. That's not going to help you find the, the uh, center of dilation. So make sure to label correctly to avoid this mistake and make sure that you connect the corresponding points, okay? By connecting the corresponding points with lines, we can see the center of dilation for two or more figures. It kind of looks like a spider web, doesn't it? So here's W and here's W prime. Well, because this has got the little tick mark for the prime notation, we know that the smaller pink one is the copy. It's the second image. See? This blue one is the pre-image, the original, and this is the image, because it's got the little tick marks. This was the first one, this was the second one. Now, when we connect W to W prime, and X to X prime, and Y to Y prime, and Z to Z prime, where do the lines meet? They meet at zero, zero. So that's the center of dilation. Okay? Now look at these triangles. The point of intersection of these lines will be the center of dilation. So we connect A to A prime. Ah, so that's the blue is the original, the pink is the copy. It's the image because it's got the prime notation, the little tick marks. We connect A to A prime, B to B prime, and C to C prime. And we see where these three lines meet. They meet at negative one and a half, negative six and a half. That's the center of dilation. See? Now, what do art and math have in common? For those of you who love to draw and aren't really crazy about math, I got a surprise for you. 
they're very connected. There's a lot of math in art. In art, the center of dilation is called the vanishing point. It's the spot in the distance. It's the intersection of the lines of the drawing, just like the center of dilation. See? That's the vanishing point. It's the same thing. It makes 3D perspective more realistic. If you want to draw a house to look 3D, if you have a vanishing point and you draw the lines, you'll be able to draw the edges of the house and the walls and the sides of the roof and even a chimney and make it look very realistic. Now look at this. We've got a picture of railroad tracks. See how the tra train tracks are vanishing into the distance there? See that? There's the horizon line and the vanishing point is way in the back. That's artwork. That's 3D perspective. That's the center of dilation. It's the vanishing point. Isn't that something? So yeah, art is very connected to math. Math is everywhere. Even music is mathematic. So we're going to continue on to the next unit. I hope now you can find a center of dilation. And I hope now when you make your drawings, you can use a vanishing point and make them, your 3D perspective look more realistic. We're going to go on to the next video of 10.2a, and we're going to start doing dilations algebraically, okay? I'll see you there. Bye.